Quest Cast. Network! Our faces start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of power, too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn! That's why I love Little Five was like a haven of just dickheads. <laughs> There's always a guy outside like selling uh, some rap album. That yeah, that dude. Oh, Cypher Canai. Cypher Canai. Bobby. <laughs> His name's Bobby. This is the goods from the woods, by the way. I'm Rivers Langley. Pat Riley. This is good that man of the hour, Tower of Power, to sweet of a sour. And we are joined today by my dear friend. Reza Asgari. I am the fern of the gully. I also want a cool catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> fern Gully was actually a terrible movie. Hang on. <laughs> We're talking about, uh, in Little Five Points, there's this guy who just sells... So the theme for tonight is, is, is hip-hop. We're talking hip-hop, and yeah. since uh, we, we're all very familiar with the city of Atlanta, I'm sure that'll come up as well. Um, and Bad this, Street. This, actually, uh, <laughs> this is actually a perfect intersection of both things, because in Atlanta, in Little Five Points, which if you've never been to Atlanta, it's kind of the cool neighborhood. It's, the hip- it's not it's like the, the cool neighborhood. I'm saying cool. In quotes, in, yeah, 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 yeah. You saw me do that. tourist cool neighborhood. Yeah. 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 You know, it has, uh, yeah. But anyway, there's a guy there, and uh, his name's Cypher Kanai. Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> and he'll fucking walk Real around. Bobby. Bobby. And try to sell you these these records. Government name Bobby. <laughs> and if you ever get duped into buying one, they're weird because the dichotomy on display of these records of uh, very threatening lyrics yeah, yeah. about just murder. A yeah. lot of Transformers references. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, juxtaposed against the nerdiest shit. Yeah. The lyric that I'll I will... I'll kill you shit like 3PO. <laughs> yeah. The lyric that I will never forget off of a Cypher Could I record is one of the worst rhymes <laughs> I've ever heard. And he goes, and here's the thing about Cypher Kanai. For some reason, he also is known as Agent Smith, like yeah, in the yeah. Matrix. Like he'll either, yeah. he, I think Cypher Kanai might be. the Well, it's duo. like Cool Keith being Doctor Octagon. Octagon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think it might be like an atmosphere situation I where, it was like, like, the Chris duo gains or something. <laughs> <laughs> the the duo, I think, makes up like him and his DJ are Cypher Kanai. He is Agent Smith, okay. I think. I always knew him as Bobby. Bobby Smith. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. Point is, this is an actual lyric from one of Cypher Kanai's songs. He goes. Agent Smith refused to be a mannequin. Welcome to the dark side. You can call me Anakin. No. <laughs> no. Like, you can't. And then go on to be like, you know. But if, if LP said that, people would be like, oh, it's a decent run. What did yeah. He say about <laughs> yeah, it's a matter of who says it. Yeah. He has a whole, th- that whole song. Uh, the song is called Surgeon General's Warning. Uh, it, it, oh, like, I bumped that one in my Toyota Solar. <laughs> It's, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the cover of his uh, mixtape is is uh, 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 one of the Transformers. I'm not sure which one. Uh, Soundwave? Yeah, I think it's Soundwave. I think it might be Soundwave. You're right. Yeah. Well, every time I would go out there, he would keep pushing these albums on me. And every time I'd see him, like, no, thanks. I don't want one. And eventually I was like, you know what? Let's just have a battle. If I'm better than you, you have to give it to me for free. Because you used to rap. You used to be yeah. a uh, rapper, right? Yeah. yeah, that's basically like my background growing up is doing like hip hop and uh, art and different things like that, but mainly yeah. like Did rapping. Did you throw down with them? Yeah, we threw down for sure. And we actually picked a couple of random people, like some goofy looking white kids that looked like they were visiting from out of town. Yeah, or the Emory judges. students, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> goofy Emory students. I got four lesbians from Bernal to come down. <laughs> <laughs> We but, don't hear and, rap about like this around, uh, you know, Agnes Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Just going down from Agnes Scott down to Cab Avenue over to uh, the Vortex. Maybe get some stuff at Psycho Sisters. Oh, if she was at Abadabas. So you had a you had a battle with Cypher. Yeah, Kanai. we basically <laughs> just went like back and forth, and each did a verse, and uh, I got voted the winner. And he was right. mad and still tried to charge me for the album. <laughs> for the album? He should win the album. <laughs> he kept making up excuses like, "Well, man, I'm out here trying to make money." I'm like, "I don't care. We had a competition, and you lost." Yeah, to yeah. use a reference he would appreciate, that would be like if Lando didn't give up the Millennium Falcon. Exactly. You know, yeah. Han like, won that shit fair and square. When Optimus Prime died, you remember that shit? Yeah. But Megatron actually <laughs> lived longer. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was standing there. I'm like, dude, I'm LL Cool J. You're cannabis. Like, give it up. Give me the <laughs> album. Cannabis. That's how this works. Cannabis. Oh, uh, his career went downhill fast. Yeah. Didn't it? yeah. He's like at the. There one. was that one line that LL Cool J used where he was like, "99.9 percent of your fans just don't exist." And yeah. I was like, "That is." <laughs> 
I don't remember what he rhymed it with, but that was fucking amazing. That was the difference in a veteran <laughs> and cannabis. a newcomer. Like, yeah. Cannabis was amazing as an MC, and he still is, but he made the mistake. He's really great on the line at West Coast Pizza Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> He tried to go after somebody who was too well established, who'd already beaten several other The most people. established, arguably. Yeah. yeah. And he went and just did a straight underground battle song, whereas LL Cool J made like a club hit that was yeah. just straight tearing cannabis apart. And it was yeah. funny because that was around the time in which LL Cool J was done with that stuff. He was doing that lover man stuff that, yeah. like, doing it and stuff like that. He, had, yeah, he yeah. was recording he, with Boys to Men. Yeah, like, I know. He had hung his gloves up. Keisha and got he, a big old butt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he was. True. My, my <laughs> I right. went to Red Lobster. To get to <laughs> <laughs> Dude, best uh, Red Lobster reference in music ever. Dude, I, was I so once <laughs> stayed woo, in Cheddar Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I ate all the biscuits. Me and Tully. <laughs> Cheddar Bay biscuits are easy to make. It's butter, more butter, more butter, butter Bisquick, butter, <laughs> and cheese. And butter. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was a there was a great to take to still stick with the hip hop theme. There was an episode of uh, Law and Order SVU that my friend Tom Seiniger always likes to bring up, uh -huh. where there are these two uh, kids that used to be gangbangers and then they go to college, right? Yeah, and they had to join a fraternity because there was like a fraternity diversity thing. Yeah, so basically there was a murder at the fraternity, and it was their old gang leader that set them up, right? Yeah, set them up to make it look like they killed them. And there's so basically one of those like, oh, you ain't never getting out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And um, their mother was addicted to heroin. And she always told them, like, you're going to graduate and I'll take you to Red Lobster <laughs> for to celebrate. Right. She dies oh, and oh. they don't know it. Like they're they're getting exonerated. And in the courthouse, Ice-T gets a call and he's just like. Hey, what thin? And it's just like, <laughs> oh shit, their mother died, you know. And he, at the end of it, he walks up to him. He's like, "Hey, you guys want to go to Red Lobster? I'm buying," <laughs> you know. <laughs> but doesn't tell them. Yeah. God, that doesn't make it wow. better. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It was just like you can't tell a kid that his mom died over a shrimp boat. <laughs> <laughs> never. Sh the shrimp could be never ending, but life <laughs> is not like shrimp. <laughs> like, I got some bad news, but first, try this fettuccine scampi. <laughs> I love Ice-T just for the fact that he plays the most confused detective of all time. Like, he went from recording Cop Killer and being almost shot by police to pretending to be one and saying things like, we found semen in her ear canal. Was that Ice-T or was that Ice-Q? No, was that Ice-T, the body count. Yeah, he he had had you killer. know, and, he's, and his character on Law & Order SVU is a Republican, <laughs> which makes it even more ridiculous. What? That if you don't follow Ice-T on Twitter, it's hysterical, because every day, like early in the morning, he'll post something like, Ice-T's daily game. Don't <laughs> let haters bring you down, yo. Make that no, money. Ice-T <laughs> has a podcast now. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. It's delightful. I always yeah. respond to him on Twitter, I'm like, hey, Ice T, give haters the flu. Haters hate being sick, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I remember one thing on SVU, him just being like, he was talking to this guy, is like, he was a NFL running back or something like right. that, retired NFL running back, and he was on the down, the guy was on the down low. Yeah, yeah. And the guy was just denying it. He's just like, no. You don't understand. You're on the down low. You're gay. <laughs> Admit it. You're gay. You're on the down low. You're being selfish. Not right. telling your woman that you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> you say it's the card game, but you're on the down low. I remember That's that my Paul episode. F. Tompkins like, movement. It was like three <laughs> linebackers for like the Falcons or something that he was trying to convince to just come out of the closet, right? Uh, it One was of them, Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> the only yeah, linebacker like, for like the Falcons the I know. Republican side of him really coming out. Like he yeah. was very adamant about like. Just just be gay. You're gay. You don't <laughs> like women. Like, really forcing it on that yeah. dude. Kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite uh, thing Ice T has ever done is still playing the rapper with like huge glasses and covered in spiked <laughs> leather clothes in breaking. Was, yeah. And now we've entered the wheels of steel, Jam O P T, and the Prince like... of God, Africa, Islam. Yeah, yeah. And now we've entered Good Night's yeah, Wheelhouse. Yeah, the first time in ten minutes I've understood what the fuck's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit about rap except Mr. Bob Dabalina. I, do, I don't watch Law and Order, and I don't go to Red Lobster that. <laughs> but I fucking I know breaking because I had Lucinda Dickey and she was fucking <laughs> slamming and her fucking.
fucking jazz dancing was much better than that shit Turbo was doing on Ozone <laughs> or any of that motherfucker. Well, I love the guy that she was friends with in her jazz class. It was like the gayest black dude of all time who still was like, yeah, we're going to get chicks, bro. Oh, fuck, maybe Ice-T will come up to her. That dude like, had gay, like, dude. Gay. You're gay. Like, you got to admit that to yourself. <laughs> That you, you are living a, a conflicted lifestyle. <laughs> Listen to Finn Tutu Ola. Oh, fuck, Lucinda Dickey will straighten anybody's ass out. Fuck, <laughs> she had a goddamn slamming body, and she looked so good with that short hair. For crying out, that's my kind of shit. I love that she's rebelling against her filthy rich parents. Like, look, we're going to give you all of our money. No, I just have to dance with the inner city children. Mm-hmm. Like, I like that was part, it. I like the part at the end where they show up with the, uh, when they have, like, the top hat and all that shit <laughs> on. Like, they do yeah. a Broadway thing, and then they rip the Sleeves they really off break it. into a Broadway audition. Now, now they're not supposed to be there, and the guy's just like, "Who's next? Ozone Street Dancer." <laughs> and it's it's a doing song. crab walk, but it's like back. it's that weird phase in rap where they were trying to find an angle to present it to the general public. Yeah, it public. still didn't have like its like own real Beat identity. Street, like, like, Breaking, Crush little, Groove. Yeah, I know very little about like rap and Rodney, the actual, like rap acts. <laughs> But I, I do know in, in them in them <laughs> days <laughs> we Ch- chipmunk rap. <laughs> oh. in, in them days, rap was part of that whole like urban package with like uh, the graffiti artists exactly. and the DJ and, and the break dancing. Yeah, and the break dancing was the one that broke big first. Yeah, before the music itself kind of became a lot more of a business. Like it was all of a package. Like yeah. it was the DJs, the break dancers, the graffiti artists, the MCs. Like everything kind of came together. It was all one. Like it was scene. that very. Very sort of New York yeah. sort well, of that's approach. What I love about like when you, they cut into the club and break in, and you see Ice T, and he's going off, and the music's playing, and then you start listening. And he to looks it. like devastating. Well, he Dave. doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't even have any actual songs. He's just rapping about whatever's happening yeah. in the room. Yeah, yeah. He's like, to our house. Yeah. <laughs> they start to have a battle, and he's like, oh, snap. And then Turbo comes back with a windmill in his face. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, and then there's that guy that's dressed like Conan the Barbarian that's in his crew <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, playing the keyboards the that wall. are, like, on the wall. The best thing in the <laughs> world was like from Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo, when they meet their rivals in the middle of the street and have a breakdance nunchuck garage can. <laughs> Fight. <laughs> <laughs> a whole choreographed number that none of them knew they were going to do. <laughs> But you yeah, know, like the scene that I was talking about when they uh, cut in and like break into the audition, as they're interrupting everything, the oldest, richest white guy named like Merlin or something <laughs> taps the lady next to him with a pencil, like, no, hold on now, let's see what they've got. <laughs> He's the That's, one that turns everybody around. It seems like have you seen the video of the guy breakdancing for for the Pope? No. It's it's John Paul. Oh, and the Pope is like doing this. No, <laughs> no, the Pope is doing the international symbol of a car on hydraulics. <laughs> He's moving his car, moving his hand no, up and down. He's raising the roof. Yeah. He's raising the, the roof. The roof in the Pope's case has Michelangelo paints yeah, it's on. Yeah, that's, that's a good roof. Chicken head move. If you're gonna, if you're gonna raise a roof. The, 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 the Pope should it. be on cribs. And shit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this if the Pope does it, he's raising the heavens. Like, has that become a thing? Yeah. It's... But, uh, yeah, that's what it reminded me of when he said it was the judge. Because it's, you know, he's in the he's in the throes of Parkinson's and whatnot. But he does manage <laughs> to raise the roof just a little bit. You uh, ever think the Pope just gets high sitting around, like, the Sistine Chapel and, like, looks at the ceiling and shit at nights? Oh, well, that... <laughs> That's where the white the white smoke when they choose the new yeah, pope. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he turns to an archbishop. Yeah, Michelangelo's smoke. pointing at you, man. Did white I tell you smoke about means the pope will be burning oil? Did I tell you about? <laughs> da, have I talked about the pope? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So the I, pope? you know, there, it's just it's becoming less and less of a likelihood that this will ever get done. So I'm just going to go ahead and give out a million dollar idea right here on the podcast. And if you can make this, please do it. Uh, just be sure to give me a, a an executive <laughs> producer credit. Um, so the pope. Martin Lawrence, uh, I've already cast it. Martin Lawrence is on vacation to the to Rome with his family. They're touring the Vatican at the time. Uh, the Pope has just died, and him and he's also with his friend. Uh, I'm thinking like Chris Tucker is like a cousin Eddie, uh, National Lampoon kind of character, just like an ancillary family member that's yeah. comic relief, hanging out with the family. They sneak off from the family to get high, and they get high in the room where the smoke comes out of, and then the new Pope smoke comes yes. out, but it's really them smoking weed, right? Huh? Yeah. And then they come in to get the new Pope. And all of a sudden, it's Martin Lawrence, Martin Lawrence yeah, is the Pope. Isn't there actually a college of cardinals that has to be involved in Pope elections? It, it's the movie. I have a no title for it. Breaking Three Vatican City Funky Legs. Let's make that happen. Dub Pope. <laughs> it's already got a name, damn it, Rez. I've, got, I've had this idea since high school. You know, you, it, It's right basically applying plane. soul plane. You take a soul plane aesthetic and apply it to Catholicism. Oh, Jesus. It's oh. perfect.
first ever actual Iranian rap group. They went by, I think it was the Black Cats, and uh-huh. it was all rap in Farsi, and it was hysterical when you translate it to English. The lyrics yeah. made no sense. What kind of stuff did they rap about? Uh, just kind of random, like, the things that you would do in Iran, where you just kind of go to people's houses and have dinner parties oh, and yeah. stuff like, like that. Chicken uh, tastes like wood, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <shit>. exactly. <laughs> it's just like rappers still yeah. have exactly. What's the Farsi it, word for keopectate? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, it really was. It was keopectate. It was like the Iranian rapper's delight, essentially. It's <laughs> how it came across. But over there, it was huge. They loved it because they'd never heard anything Was it like that. also 19 minutes long? <laughs> <laughs> Neighbor Kevin is here. Uh, where we ha- we were having the conversation about rapper's delight and uh, oh, these uh, are the breaks. Oh, oh yeah, 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 the breaks by Curtis breaks. Curtis Blow. Breaks in a bunch, breaks on the car, breaks to make you a superstar, breaks to win and break to lose. But these here breaks rock your shoes, and these are the breaks. Break it up, break it up, break it up. I made an argument that even though it is much longer, the breaks is like nine minutes long. Uh, Rapper's Delight is, I believe, 19. Even yeah. though it's longer, Rapper's Delight does have the superior bass line. Yeah. Because it's Chic. Yeah, it's Good Times by Chic. So uh, it's... Uh, but yeah, no, that that song goes goes on and on. And actually, I have... I had a friend in high school when we were, I think, in probably 10th grade. He had just bought a copy of uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn by Pink Floyd. And I was like, oh, man, could you burn me a copy of that? He's like, yeah, sure, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. And then just for fun, he stuck on Rapper's Delight as track one. <laughs> so to this day on my iPod, my copy of Piper at the Gates of Dawn, <laughs> the first track one is boom, well, Was that boom, the Sid Barrett era? But on the first album, recorded across the hallway from Sgt. Pepper's. Now uh, that Arsenio Hall's back on the air with a TV show, you think he's going to bring back his rap alter ego, Chunky A? <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Ow! So good to me, Ali, That was a me and four other people were the only ones that bought that cassette. Let me say, ah! Oh. I thought his alter ego was Sammy. It was no, dude. This was the most amazing yeah. thing ever. He put he out was... one album as Chunky A, and it yeah. was basically like a it's comedy version of like the Fat Boys. He did all Chunky rap songs about a? being yeah. fat. Yeah, that sounds oh, like poop. Oh, get <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, uh, time out. I'm gonna say something. You mentioned Fat Boys. Yes. Have you ever seen Fat Boys Disorderly? I yeah. love Disorderly. Yeah. Great yeah. fucking movie. Have they meet the Beach Boys? <laughs> <laughs> they, they rap to a version of the Beatles' Baby, You're a Rich Man too. How do you go on the hearts yeah, of a rich white man and get all his money? Like, how can you not love the that? The Three Stooges, if they could rap. Yeah, exactly. The Fat Boys cameo on uh, on Miami Vice is equally good. Where the, hu- <laughs> where the human beatbox sells a Sonny Crockett pot <laughs> 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 and gets busted. <laughs> and he's like, Whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> Talking about rap uh, cameos, one of my favorites was when Criss Cross played opposing gang members on different world that was in a <laughs> was it like Harsen. brother against brother yeah, yeah well they like were the like Civil supposedly War? friends that grew up together but then they joined different gangs who were rivals and like uh kadeem hardison's character had to be like the mentor to intervene and like break them up and get them to become friends again and just watching crisscross try to act like gangsters were they like the most, 12 and shit they were probably it was a little bit after they had already become famous so they oh, okay. were maybe like 17 Did 18 they have, at the time were backwards though, yeah right? they yeah. still had the backwards overalls and everything yeah. like they were it's still hard rocking to those. Pee with, with those. <laughs> i remember uh, yeah like growing up out here in la i actually went to a store on melrose where uh, exhibit was there with the alcoholics selling a demo cd of paparazzi before he ever got a deal <laughs> Wait, was the Alcoholics his band, or were they just Alcoholics? The Alcoholics was another actual rap group. Yeah. Oh, okay. like Alcoholics with a K at the end. Well, yeah. I, I, I don't know what I that is, but it's interesting. So you had it? Did yeah. You have? So I still it, have it. He signed it to Reza, Keep Hip Hop Alive. Is it, different? <laughs> <laughs> is it different than the one that was released? Yeah, it was, was actually just like a demo CD, basically. It had no label or anything on it. It just had his name and like a booking information and like the name of the song and all that. Like complete demo that he'd made himself. And he, when he, he had the hit, he re-recorded the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, he basically, uh, it was the first song that he uh, was pushing to start, like, getting his album out and, like, get signed to a major label. But it was back, it was, I love at that time when guys like Exhibit and, like, Sublime and those bands were just around L.A. Like, you could just go to a bar and see Sublime didn't performing. You, didn't you see Tupac at Roscoe's? <laughs> 
Yeah, it was a uh, Tupac a and Snoop Dogg. Did as he have, a matter of fact, did he have Pitbull? Was he drinking? No, pit it was me and a. a <laughs> <friend. I'm> <laughs> there, so wait, there's the Roscoe's. The, there's a picture of Obama. He went to the Roscoe's, <laughs> and the whole staff is there. And one of the motherfuckers is shilling Pitbull. He's holding a fucking Pitbull. <laughs> I did not see that. Who drinks an energy drink with a chicken and waffles? But no, me and a, a friend of mine were at the Roscoe's with his sister, and we were a little bit younger. And his sister was incredibly high, so she's just scarfing down food. And Tupac and Snoop Dogg were there, so we're losing it. Like, oh my god. I want to meet these guys. And as quickly as she's eating her food, she looks stoned. So you hear from the booth behind her out of nowhere, like, damn, girl, why don't you slow down before you chew through the plate? And she turns around to yell at him, and it's George Wallace sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. The governor of Alabama? No, the governor. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> George Wallace died back in 98. He's in hell it was, now. Exactly. No, it's he's his, it's Roscoe's, a, yeah. apparently. Yeah. That's one, like, one thing I, I love about himself. doing comedy now is, like, before when I was doing hip-hop and music and stuff, it's like comedy is almost like a spoken word version of that, where there's still beef between comics and yeah. that kind of yeah. shit. <laughs> like, I loved growing up on rappers, like, beefing with each other. It was one of the be- one of my favorite things is still to this day when KRS One showed up to a PM Dawn concert. <laughs> PM Dawn, the most soft spoken, like peaceful, loving group of all time in hip hop, <laughs> walks up on stage during their show, pushes the fat dude off the stage, <laughs> steals the microphone, and just starts doing the bridges over. Like, it was unbelievable. <laughs> I saw KRS one once and he was two hours late. <laughs> he was two hours late. He performed for twenty minutes and spent thirty minutes talking about that pantheon of hip hop <laughs> yes. thing that he was doing and he pulled out the poster. The temple of hip hop. Yeah, I know. And he's like, and there's Queen Latifah and there's MC Light, because we have to get the ladies in there too. <laughs> <laughs> I lo- the temple of hip hop is like KRS one's version of Scientology for hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> It really is. There's like levels and orders and yeah, like yeah. Jay-Z is like stage nine or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and there's a pyramid too. But I was so, asking yeah. if he was like taking clothes off because I saw an interview with him where he specifically said that. He's like, you want to go up there with a lot of things on. Yeah, and he did. as you're performing, you take off a jacket and then another jacket and then a sweater. And you want the audience to feel like you're removing layers of yourself and becoming part and of And it was them. hilarious. because oh, like 20 minutes? <laughs> yeah. And it was hilarious because it was June in Atlanta. <laughs> and he was wearing all these clothes. <laughs> he was sweating up a storm. Yeah, just, yeah exactly. Exactly. Like, I only like did a, 20 minutes. He's about to pass out. That just out. sounds like you just have a giant pile of stinky <laughs> laundry at the end of the <laughs> like night. Like, just man. making sure KRS1 <laughs> is... <laughs> KRS1 is not a radio station, is it? No. It's no, a person. It, okay. No. He has a, yeah, like, he has a it, fake it stands, patois. It stands for uh, Knowledge Reigns Supreme over nearly everyone. It makes everyone. it feel like somebody... Like nearly artist, everyone. Was, but yeah, it's just amazing. Like, it makes you feel like the, uh, the, the, the artist didn't show up and they found a homeless guy out front and be like, here, you got to perform now. Well, shit, let me take off my four... Overcoats. <laughs> that just sounds like so much fucking laundry. I'm not converting from the Universal Zulu Nation for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I actually did when I was like 13 or 14. I sent in like a $10 check and the pamphlet to sign up for the Temple of Hip Hop. Really? Like I wanted to become a member. <laughs> did you get anything back? Uh, I think I got a like Dakota a certificate. Ring? Yeah. <laughs> a certificate like where you can actually marry card. people in like the United States. <laughs> Into the temple of hip hop. It was like a piece of paper from KRS One that was like, Congratulations for joining. These are the foundations. Keep graffiti alive and like some dumb stuff like that. So are you still a member, theoretically? Probably, yeah. I don't or think you last? Fired. Uh, I'm not sure. I may have to go back and take the test again. Right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is a rap session. And my name is Horace Boyd. And when I talk about Favorite rap battle? Just of uh, ever? Yeah. Which? What's? I'm curious what everybody's favorite one is. I mean, the only one I've ever seen is the one in Eight Mile. <laughs> <laughs> so rabbit. I like B Rabbit versus Papa Doc. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That's, tell me something I don't know. I grew up in a trailer. And all that, shit. that was good shit. What about you, Kevin? <laughs> Neighbor Kevin? I think the cliche one's Nas, Jay-Z. I mean, that produced the best songs. I was listening to The Champs, and apparently there was a rap battle between MC Hammer and Search. Yes. Where MC Hammer put in a hit for the Crips to come murder Search. Yes. Wait, so it's Search first from third base? Stanley. From third yes. base. From third base. Stanley. And once, he, <laughs> once the plane landed, the, the A&Rs had already found out, so they pull Search off the plane and get him in a, like, in a car, and they drive him away, and they show up, and there's this, like, 
leader of the Crips that's sitting with him. They paid the bounty to not have him killed. And this leader of the Crips is following him around everywhere and throwing up gang signs to gang members that nobody can see so that nobody murders Search when he gets to Los Angeles. Jesus. Wow. MC Hammer put that hit out. I don't know if I believe that. He's a man of God. <laughs> now he's a man of God. Well, After he, always... he moved to Tracy and lost all his money. You no, know, he, yeah. he had to pray just to make it at even. <laughs> <laughs> have you all ever seen his movie? <laughs> Please, Hammer, don't hurt him. The Reverend yes, Pressure. The Reverend Pressure. Did we talk about that? Yeah, yeah we, we talked did. about it. Yeah. yeah, there's a 20 minute segment where he just preaches. Just as a sermon. Character. Yeah, the yeah. Reverend Pressure. No, he had a, a show on that, that, whatever that religious channel yeah. was yeah. for a while. MC Hammer watching. Ministries. The MC, yeah. There was a bomb in Gilead. I saw him that episode. <laughs> Uh, my my favorite has to be uh, Suge Knight just like hanging vanilla ice outside of a out balcony, of balcony. <laughs> yeah. by his ankles. The weirdest one is the beginning of, of the chronic. It's Snoop Dogg talking all this shit to people <laughs> he's never met. You're like, who? Because like now it's weird to look because you listen to it now. Everyone knows who Snoop Dogg is. But yeah. you have to keep in mind, in 1992, he was, like some he was just some yeah, guy just talking all this shit about Ice Cube and, like, Jerry Heller, his lawyer and shit. And you're like, eh, who are you? <laughs> like, who are you to well, talk about What I don't understand, too, is, is the part we talked about, you know. Niggas with big dicks, AKs, and 187 skills. I'm just picturing these naked guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, standing there like the Russian army, like in formation. I'm like, but isn't that a scary sight though? Like you see four guys that look like Shaquille O'Neal, all naked with guns, yeah, but, yeah. but their balls are vulnerable in that kind of situation. <laughs> Yep. Well, what I love was uh, on that, like, Fuck With Dre Day song that him and Snoop Dogg did where uh, they're going after, like, Easy and all the guys they were beefing with at the time. And then they call out Tim Dogg, who was a shitty rapper from New York who recorded a song called Fuck Compton that, like, nobody heard. <laughs> but they felt the need to go after this guy, even though he still doesn't have a career. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. Well, I mean, you know, they represent Compton. Mm -hmm. And the bet is like, uh, what was it? Tupac's hit him up. You cannot top that one as far as like really going after somebody. He starts his song off with, you claim to be a player, but I fucked your wife. Like, that's a way to start a battle song. Yeah. And then he ends it with, oh, Mob Deep, don't one of you motherfuckers have sickle cell or some shit? You about to die catch fucking with me? You're like, I mean, he rips into these dudes. Did you Mob ever hear Stomp? Deep? It was like a young buck one from G Unit. And then he sends, uh, he sends it to T.I. And he's like, T.I., why don't you diss Ludacris? Because I know you guys don't like each other. Real niggas see the difference between you and this. Me getting beat down, that's Ludacris. And then he takes it and then he sends it to Ludacris and is like, yo, look what T.I. said about you. Would you like to get on this track? And then Luda just fucking murders him. Nobody's thinking about you, plus your beef ain't legit. So please stay off the T.I.P. of my dear. On this track, that was a great. Wait, so they put, on, that one, yeah. they put both of them on the same track? Well, yeah, that Young Buck sends it to to, oh, that's to Ti so that Ti can just like he just like throws him under a bus and then he just gives it to Luda. It's like Luda, What's why this? don't you take this out? That would happen what? a lot. It's called though. Stomp. It was so, so like the, good. Uh, with like mixtape DJs and shit, they would be talking to somebody or like working with an artist, like, oh, you don't like this dude? Let's just record something for my mixtape, and then they would play it for the other guy and just start a beef. <laughs> like a lot of these mixtape DJs would just do that. They get people to just start dissing each other for no reason. I mean, the thing I love about it is, like like you were saying, with them, you know, it, what was it? Snoop Dogg and Dre are talking shit about some dude in New York that's just, like, some jabroni. They fucking fuck Compton. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, you know, LL Cool J is starting to fight with, you know, the, li the line cook at West Coast Pizza Kitchen. <laughs> like, it, it reminds me of, if you remember when Kane was feuding with <laughs> Snitsky, <laughs> you're like... Who the fuck is Snitsky and why does why is he getting all this airtime from Kane? Who gives a shit? Well, it's I don't just know. Like a personal thing for like when Eminem first came out, his first album. There's a ton of lines where he's going off and insulting and doing actual like diss tracks about this rapper Cage, who was like a local guy. Who? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, some Johnny dude from Cage. Detroit. He has Johnny the Cage. <laughs> he has couldn't the, even fuck you fucking in your sunglasses. Kano. But it's like in his mind, like I got an opportunity. You got a horrible a fatality. <laughs> like, How can you <laughs> kick three heads yeah, off of one to be man? A fucking action movies. <laughs> <laughs> There's not going to be a friendship at the end of this. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite. Boom! My favorite. Wallace my favorite rap. Wallace Victor. Uh, no. My favorite rap rivalry is Old Dirty Bastards Id versus Old Dirty Bastards <laughs> Super Ego. <laughs> 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 Old Dirty Bastard at the best line of all time. I don't have no trouble with you fucking me, but I have a little problem with you not fucking me. <laughs> I think my favorite was God made dirt, dirt bust your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hold on, was this Red Fox? What the fuck? <laughs> is he, he may as well. Old Dirty Bastard was essentially the Red Fox of hip hop. <laughs> That's a good. My example. favorite one was I got the government lost on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> 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 he had some good lines. He he had some. Uh, the MTV thing where they followed him to get his welfare check is yeah. the greatest yeah. thing that's oh, ever. He happened. stops to pee on a wall with Kurt Loder. <laughs> yeah. So good. It's so fucking I didn't know good. Kurt Loder could pee. <laughs> <laughs> What about where he saved the kid from getting, was it a bus, from getting run over by the bus, and then they go to the VMA Awards, like, the next day, oh, <laughs> and he gets an award, he's like, yeah, Wu-Tang is for the children, go, go, no, go. It was uh, somebody else, I think it was, like, Kanye West that won an award. No, it was, uh, it was, the person that won the award was, oh, God, it wasn't even anybody, Sean Colvin. That's what it was. Sean Colvin won, um, the, uh, Grammy for Song of the Year for Sonny Came Home, which is, like, the worst 90s song ever. <laughs> like, that's, like, straight up Ralph's. DJ let's, worst song ever. Let's take a listen. Oh man, it's <laughs> awful. I used to go to this thrift store and they only had like three songs they would play on loop and it was every little thing she does is magic. <laughs> Perfect. Sonny Perfect. came home. God damn it. There's and, a Brian uh, Adams in there. Give me one reason yeah. to stay here. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tracy, dude, those yeah, are Tracy all Chapman. That's the be- that's the best grocery yeah, store mix of all time. And he, <laughs> he busted onto the stage just in the middle of the Grammy Awards. I don't even think Wu-Tang was nominated no, for No, it anything. wasn't even an award they were up for. Yeah, I don't th- I don't even award. think it because it was around the time in which Wu-Tang Forever came out which was, yeah. like, the most hyped-up uh, rap second album ever, I think. Yeah. Like, the, there were, like, MTV specials about it and stuff like that. I don't even think they were nominated for Best Rap Album for that one. But they just, like, ODB shows up, and he just goes on this rant during, and she just looks confused, you yeah, know? Yeah, she's just standing there with her award, and he's got the microphone. He's like, hold up, Wu-Tang is for the children. I like right? your I song. Like I love yeah. your song. And I just, like, when he said, I love your song, I just imagine Old Dirty Bastard just, like, smoking PCP <laughs> in a van somewhere, just, listening to Sonny Came Home being like, this is good. <laughs> I pictured him in a tub with, like, a book with that song in the background. The, the, the Wu-Tang thing to me is, like, too daunting. It's like trying to... <laughs> convert to like Shia Islam there's a lot of there's a lot of like mythology and protocol you have to learn and it's just well, too it's much. Like, well yeah every member he come out and like so who are you well I'm Method Man if I'm in Wu-Tang but if we're going out it's just the Wu is hot nickels but then we're, we're in Takao. mafia mode I'm Johnny Blaze like why do you have so many I know like what was it Old Dirties was the best he was, Old, was Dirty Old Dirty Bastard Dirt Bastard. McGirt and Big Baby Jesus yeah yeah that was the Osiris best too. oh and Osiris yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like, we should go around the table and everybody make their own alternate Wu Tang persona, right? Yeah, now. how yeah. many do we need? Uh, I think two a piece. Uh, what, what are yours, Russ? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd like to. I like sticking to like the mafia and karate themes. So, okay. Like, if I had to, the karate Wu Tang name would definitely have to be something like Johnny Rice Noodle. Okay. <laughs> I, I just like Rice Noodle as a last name. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. And then the mafia one, it's got to be like. Uh, something to do with the word sticky. <laughs> like Sticky Legs Johnson or yeah. something like that. Um, what, what are yours good? Well, I have one. Sometimes I'm Sergeant Sky High. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like that. that. But uh, what's my, I'm trying to think of my other alternate personas because I actually have many that I use on different occasions. Yeah. But they don't always have names. Sometimes I was a space outlaw at night when I go on quests. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of quests? They usually involve Redondo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> or casinos. <laughs> What's the best casino quest you've had? Probably some time I got high in Cabazon. <laughs> and you, you, drive, saw, you saw MC Hammer. And, saw MC Hammer yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a pizza. Oh, and then there was a time we won lo- money on Lobster Mania. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my other name, Lobster Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, By the way, I think we just created an amazing new Xbox game. Good night, Quest. That is a <laughs> If there's anybody interested out there that works in the video gaming industry, you know, get, get, call us at, at this show. I well, thought you said Lobster Mania. I was like, no, we just created Hogan's new restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about. Oh, that. I have, I have mine. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I will go with uh, Just the Six Pack. <laughs> 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 After the uh, ill-fated Just the Soft Drink. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> 
Genitals McGee. How about <laughs> Genitals <laughs> McGee? How about Bobby Booty Cheeks. Bobby Booty Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> that's another one I've gone by. Neighbor Kevin, <laughs> you got a you got a name? There's actually a, a website that's just a Wu Tang name oh, generator. Yeah, you just go put your that. name in the Wu Tang generator. So while you guys were doing yours, I looked it up and. The, <laughs> The two I got were Tough Commander and Unlucky Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky Ninja is amazing. Unlucky Ninja was the one that yeah, I got. Type in my name in the Wu Tang generator. I want to see what I get. <laughs> what is the Reza best is if you, you if you type in uh, Riza, it'll give you his actual name. Uh, Reza's Wu Tang generator name is Lazy Ass Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> That could not be more appropriate. <laughs> How does this right. fucking thing work? That's amazing. Is Lazy like, ass what hunter. Things? Anagrams? It just whatever that shit three is. Three words at yeah, random. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't think there's any rhyme Lazy or reason to it. Lazy ass hunters. Great. Yeah, right? Wow. Hip hop concerts are either the best or the worst. The Roots put on one of the greatest shows you'll ever see. Amazing. Uh, Soldier Boy, on the other hand, <laughs> puts on. Does he get a real like steel drum player? No. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? He actually Why wouldn't hires he? a guy to dress as Superman, and then he finds a hoe. What does he say <laughs> in that fucking song? Nothing. Superman you don't even watch you, words. It's okay. Superman and Spider Man are actually urban legend uh, frat boy. 16 year old sexual maneuvers. Right, right. The Superman's. Where and, you, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. You gotta balance yeah, yourself. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, no, no it, it's where you. I'll say it. I know what it fucking is. The Superman is where you come on a girl's back and then you stick the bed sheet to her back. Gotcha. Yeah, and the so Spider Man's like a. And the Spider Man's where you fling it on her. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's gross. Yeah. Continue. But that's, that's essentially the whole song is about doing those things. And that stuff is being played at like the Republican National Convention, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> and people are doing the the Superman dance. Yeah, those and it's are like, like graduation songs now. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> and they don't know because people don't do the research. Yeah. you know. But yeah, I did. I saw Soldier Boy at Beard Eve's Memorial Coliseum in Auburn, and he played the the Superman song four or five times like and then just broke it up with like he had i'm so pissed he doesn't have a steel drum player <laughs> yeah he should have here's the thing he literally i'm not kidding he had at one point i counted 17 people on stage yeah all ha they all had microphones Th that was it and they were just playing the music and just kind of wandering around and i'm like yeah and then the exactly. girls correct gone wild me. music's playing in the background yeah, yeah. while he's rapping yeah. over correct it. me if my knowledge of this is outdated but isn't the problem with a lot of rap concerts that they don't have like a band so well it's the just problem like is with these well, guys like Guys like Soldier Boys, they just kind of have one song that becomes a hit randomly, yeah. but they don't, they're not good performers. Right. They don't know how to perform and entertain an audience. Like Jay Z tours with a band, Eminem tours with a yeah, band. Yeah, they actually they have stage setups, they do performance stuff, they have like pyrotechnics and things, they actually like incorporate like a story into the song, they do characters. Yeah. But a lot of these guys, like Soldier Boy and kind of the lesser known guys, they just think they have a hit song, so they can go out on stage bring their whole crew out and then everybody just yells the song and has a party and yeah. that's what's fun for the audience. Yeah. But that's not entertaining to watch as an audience. Yeah, member. no. Do you have favorite rapper crews? Like did you ever see Nelly's St. Lunatics oh, crew? God. Oh god. There They're was the one guy who would just wear the mask and shimmy in the he background. He never said anything. I, I was really I loved uh, I, uh, Bizarre. Murphy from Lee, Club. I'm oh. an ashtray. I touch butts all day. You could treat me like a toilet. You can sit on me. <laughs> that's bizarre. Wait, I hate whoa, whoa, it. hold on, hold on, hold on. What? <laughs> that's from that's uh, from the Saint Lunatics album. So Murphy Lee has a line. Murphy Lee, the ashtray. Yeah. I touch butts all day. You can treat me like a toilet. You can sit on me. He has like self esteem issues because he's in Nelly's yeah. shadow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's what that sounds Why like. Why did he wear band aids on his face? It was because he was dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it's it, an interesting look, though. He doesn't have good lighting in his bathroom when he's shit. I mean, yeah, I was going, yeah, but you think he'd have just a little piece of toilet paper stuff. <laughs> Well, I like, well, he's uh, rich. He can afford the whole band I always yeah. liked Freaky Ta from the Lost Boys. He was the one guy that legitimately did nothing. He was. It was, was almost that the like guy from, that was in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> well, there was like a, a <laughs> series of groups around like the early to mid '90s, like Naughty by Nature and the Lost Boys, and a lot of these guys who had the one member who didn't do anything but just yell a few words in the background. Yeah. So, like any Lost Boys song, you would hear a guy just going, "Ah." Oh, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's like yeah, that's like uh, or like Sendo from Cypress Hill or Soche from <laughs> Onyx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just one guy, Professor who just Griff. Yells. 
He's just, professor, he's just professor showing Griff off the things he learned at- in karate class. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine Professor Griff at the mall karate studio <laughs> and his like paramilitary gear <laughs> doing karate with a bunch of little kids. <laughs> and, uh, and being uh, anti-Semitic. Uh, no, just, they're all in their geese and stuff and it's like tiny tigers class. And oh. Professor Griff's in his like <laughs> military gear just doing like sidekicks, practicing his sidekicks was with like- the fake break off board. I know, good night. You've you've seen MC Hammer. Has everybody else had a, have a favorite uh, live experience with the That's with the, the band? Only rap concert. I've that would be my before. first ever concert I went to. It really, was, uh, Hammer? Fushnikins, <laughs> MC Light, and Criss Cross. Was was Shaq there? <laughs> no, this was before they recorded with Shaq. Oh this man, was like their first album. <laughs> Fushnikins. Fushnikins. Yeah, yes. Fushnikins, dude. As I soothe in the groove, cause I'm smooth like Mr. Wu. Doobly soo, Mr. Wu. No need to be rude, but f you. I love those guys. They had Chip Fu, the original like fast rapper. He would just put words together at random. If you actually listen to what he said, he's just like, Papa, I eat spinach, Peter Piper, yeah, but it do. Like, <laughs> those were his lyrics. <laughs> he didn't actually say anything. He just picked words that he could say fast. It was amazing. Neighbor Kevin, have you, have you seen any uh, any good hip-hop shows? My first hip-hop show was, uh, it was a DJ battle at the Wiltern, and then after that, uh, Mad Lib came out with oh, Jay right. Dilla, oh, yes. and then Talib Kweli and Common... And then they did Get Em High, and Kanye West came out. Nice. This was right before late registration dropped. Or the day it dropped, I think. And then he ended the show <laughs> with uh, Jesus Walks, which is like my fucking most hated Kanye West song. <laughs> but my favorite one was I saw Dave Chappelle open up for Mos Def and Erica Badu. Oh, shit. Erica Badu fucking murdered Oh, her. I've seen her she before. She ripped she it. Uh, she was oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mos Def, it was a little boring. The first time I ever saw him, he smoked weed and just did acapella uh, cake songs. Like, you I'm ever sorry. heard the song Dime from Cake? Yeah. He just did it acapella by himself, smoked. It was so amazing. Wait. And then the next time I saw him with Dave Chappelle, he just sat there in a track jacket. He's like, this is a new song. I know you don't know it, so we're just going to dance a little bit. And then he walked <laughs> off, and Chappelle was like, get back out here and do Umi Says right now. <laughs> and then he made him do that, and that was it. Hold on. Cake, like the, the alternative band. Yeah. From the I'm 90s? a dime, I shine, yeah. and I'm freshly minted. That he did that song, yes, oh from my Cake. God, that's it, crazy. Listen, I know I can see your all, all your face. It was it was amazing. Yeah, I know it was Most amazing. Guys, I love Cake with that yeah. kind of stuff. I've seen him that was amazing. Just, yeah, you, the other times you, I saw him, he was not good. You said that, and I thought there might have been a rapper named Cake that I didn't nope. know about. Oh my god, you did that. There might have been a rapper named. Cake. <laughs> it's weird. Really funny that you mentioned Mad Lib of all people, because I actually ended up sort of like subliminally battling him in a studio one day what it was like maybe 15 years ago i was like i was really young teenager and uh, i was with a couple of my friends who i was rapping with at the time and we went into a radio station somewhere in downtown la and uh mad lib was there with a few other guys and we were all just kind of going around passing the microphone around the room and like they could tell we were a little bit newer and we weren't as experienced at them at the time so uh they basically start insulting us and if you weren't like really into hip hop or you weren't an MC, you couldn't tell. It just sounded like lyrics, but you knew like we knew it was about us because it's what we did. So I'm like, all right, this is how they're gonna do it. I just came back with stuff that I had already written and pre-planned. I'm like, freestyle's going out the window. Like I'm gonna show these dudes what's what. And then we just started going back and forth. Like I started doing my battle rhymes, my friend started doing his, and you could see Mad Lib just like, oh, okay, so he starts coming at us. And nobody ever said anything directly, but he became like this subliminal sort of like fight between us and his crew. And it was so weird and uncomfortable in the actual room at the time, if you could have been there. That guy was, I, when I went, I went to San Francisco State and we always tried to get a show to come. I tried to get a show to come. And uh, one of the people I called was Mad Lib's agent to see if, or uh, yeah, to see if we can get him to come. 
And they were like, Mad Lib costs $15,000. He needs a hotel room and something that's four stars or better. And he travels with four people. We need three bedrooms. And I was like, you're not that good, dude. <laughs> no, I know who you are. I love you, but nobody else. Why the hell don't we get into this business? You've got the rap experience, so you can be the rapper. Yeah. Yeah. And we can be some kind of ridiculous posse You guys are my shit. entourage. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because we are in a business where you make no goddamn money. And if I had the slightest clue how to fucking rap... You know I'd be doing it. No, but uh, honestly, like the best rap show that I ever saw was I was I my friends threw a uh, a Halloween party, this big ass Halloween party. It was like 300, 400 people in their house, and it was like fucking huge. It was insane, and out of nowhere, Cool Keith came into the oh, party, wow. all fucked up. He was like drunk and stuff <laughs> like that, and like we had a DJ, and he's just like. Gets the microphone that was there. He's just like, play some shit. I don't care. <laughs> and the guy starts playing random, like, records and scratches. And he just starts rapping. And it was like, he went on for, like, 30 minutes in the middle of this party, unannounced, <laughs> wow. randomly. And it was awesome. Like, he kicked so much ass. He was so drunk. And then he just grabbed, like, two girls from the party <laughs> and went into somebody's bedroom. And he's just like, later, guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was just like, what? That's what amazing. just happened? Doing stupid shit like telling jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you get a couple of rhymes and you take an old bass line from a disco song. We could be doing this shit yeah. as it is, for fuck's sake. I don't, uh, it's weird. Like I, I love how other artists and other types of music, when they want any sort of like street credibility, immediately have to throw a rap verse. Yeah. I was listening to Pandora the other day, and for some reason, my Tech Nine Pandora station <laughs> decided to play Miley Cyrus, <laughs> and it played this song that she has called "Do My Thang." It's spelled T H A N G. And she straight up raps like gangster in there. And she's cursing throughout it, talking about popping bottles and slapping bitches. I'm like, you're Miley Cyrus. What yeah. the fuck are you Does doing? Does she rap with a fake patois? Because that would make it even oh, better. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, you listen to her singing. She's like, I'm going to do my thing. Like, the way it comes out is oh, awful. Miley Cyrus have a fake patois. Even Jay-Z. <laughs> like Fergie. The most, the most underrated rapper of all time is Snow, all right? <laughs> I will agree with Snow. you on that. He's Millie so... Vanilli but... is the most underrated rapper. Well, I used to rap Jam Informer. But I still love Snow for the fact that he will have the only reggae song in the history of reggae music that has the line, me born and raised in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's in it. <laughs> love that line. So uh, it's, it's time now for uh, oh, a yeah. new award-winning segment. <laughs> it's already award-winning. It's brand new, but shit, we got an award already. It won. It's won a Razzie. It's time. It's time. For World's greatest grandpa award-winning segment. <laughs> it's it's uh, time to take a peek into the disgraced land, Picky Yoon. Uh, just a couple of top stories today. The segment this, of fun is this segment has time. won the participant award at a Pizza Hut. Fifteen yeah. time <laughs> world 15. Woo! heavyweight champion. Uh, headline. <laughs> Stop feeding the goddamn bears! <laughs> Sebring, Florida. Oh, yeah. I thought it was Jellystone. The, the, the cur, the cur, Been there. <laughs> Jellystone? <laughs> <That's> Sebring, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Jellystone's beautiful this Sebring, time. Sebring, Florida. Uh, the court clerk of Highlands County said it's possible that an 81 year old Mary Musselman. Which, oh, holy shit, out. that's the it. best fucking name. Hey, you might appreciate this. Isn't that an old word for Muslims? <laughs> Muslims? Yeah, they used to call Muslim. Remember that Mus shit? I thought yeah. that meant mummy man. No, not the mummy, the Muslims. <laughs> the mummies are not m Muslims. They that was actually the name pagan. of Iranian sea workers. It was the muscle man. The muscle man. <laughs> 81 year old, it is possible that 81 year old Mary Musselman, the woman accused of feeding bears and the mimi man. feeding the mimi bears man. and threatening law enforcement officers will With remain in jail until a hearing in March. Uh, authorities say she fed bears outside of her home despite repeated requests to stop <laughs> um, because she was already on probation for allegedly feeding bears when she was arrested at the time. The court says it's, she is not eligible for bond. So there's an 81-year-old woman doing feed, hard time for feeding feed bears. bears. Doing hard time. <laughs> hard times feeding in bears. <laughs> hard times like the 81-year-old woman <laughs> the 81 sitting in woman jail. Sitting in jail for feeding the bears. That's hard times. That's time, hard times. Time, and Ranger damn. Smith, you put hard times on this country when you took down Boo Boo Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Authorities say she resisted arrest and then threatened to kill the officers. Yeah. Which, <laughs> fuck yeah, With dude. the bears. The bears. This yeah, is the best old lady. The bears to now murder for her. <laughs> they do her bidding. The Florida Wildlife Commission reiterated that feeding bears can make them aggressive towards people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also uh, incapable of finding food on their own. They even said that one of the bears that Musselman fed had to be put down. Uh, <laughs> her hearing is scheduled for March 3rd. So, yeah. There's... There is no space between the wild and the domestic. Domestic in Florida. Not in Sebring, my <laughs> not, no, not in all of Florida because you know you'll have an alligator in your swimming pool. Yeah, you got the all the <laughs> all the snakes are actually snakes that were used to be pets that are now eating yeah. all the stuff. You, you got the skunk ape. The skunk around. ape. Yeah, I you got the skunk. I'm gonna say this. I'm a firm believer in Bigfoot, but Bigfoot <laughs> lives in the Pacific Northwest in Canada. I do not believe in any Southern Midwest or New England Bigfoot. My mom claims. Oh, you don't know about mom? the Jacksonville Chupacabra? <laughs> That's not a Bigfoot. That's not Sasquatch. <laughs> they come up from Mexico like you kill a bee. <laughs> my, my mom, my mom claims to have seen uh, a uh, so, uh, some sort of Sasquatch on the. F she used to commute to work in Real Town, Alabama. Well, maybe he was on where vacation. it's real as fuck. <laughs> she claims to have seen uh, uh, something weird one running he across the road. Oh, when do you Alabama. not see something weird in Real Town, Alabama? Yeah, you know? exactly. Uh, it could but, have been a possum. Well, I've it's probably seen like one of those. it could have been one of those like hairy dudes that has like hair on his face that's <laughs> on like <laughs> got out from the circus. Yeah, that's on, on like you know. Guinness World Records, and he was all methed out and stuff. <laughs> it was Phil from Duck Dynasty. Yeah. He was all hopped up on the goofballs. That's what your mom saw. <laughs> Finally, as always, we like to go to a place where everybody knows your name. Logansville, Georgia. <laughs> Two people were arrested outside of a local breakfast restaurant after an indecent brush with the law on Sunday morning. According to Logansville police, authorities were advised... Logansville's that there were, a toilet, too. <laughs> that there were, according to Logansville police, authorities were advised that there were two people having sex in a Dodge truck in the Waffle House parking lot on 4700 block of the Atlanta Highway. Authorities approached the vehicle and observed a, quote, female straddling a male, in quote, in the driver's seat. Both oh, yeah. both weren't wearing Was pants. Was that Gary? <laughs> Turn it, man, Rivers. Head name Lancelot. <laughs> both, both weren't wearing pants, as you, as you expect. Mm. Uh, the officer asked the two to get dressed and said that he noticed the, sm the strong smell of alcohol coming from the truck, as you imagine. <laughs> oh, the woman was asked to get dressed a number of times before she finally That's decided to That's the midnight rain tree. <laughs> she found her soulmate on OK Cupid. His name was scattered, smothered, and covered <laughs> 72. <laughs> Actually, I think it was Christian Mengel. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the weird part. According to the police report, the woman, who was later identified as Rachel Gossett, attempted repeatedly... Rachel, call me if I'm going to look her up on Facebook. Everybody, Facebook, <laughs> Rachel Gossett. Send her some love. Loganville, uh, Georgia. I'll give her some love. I've got to get me a Dodge truck with, yeah. the, with the Hemis. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. Rachel Gossett uh, attempted repeatedly to put a cheeseburger on her foot as a sandal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I heard about the girl trying to wear cheeseburgers. How the, what? That doesn't even make any fucking sense. She's from McDonald's Land or something. <laughs> yeah. I was just custom. about to say that. She, she's, yeah. the, she's the Hold hamburger. on. How dare you arrest me? Mayor McCheese will hear about <laughs> this. <laughs> this is bullshit. This goes all the way to the top. <laughs> The two were arrested and transported due to their extreme intoxication. They were issued citations for public intoxication and loitering, but not having sex in the truck. But that's what everyone <laughs> does in Loganville. That's how that's how lovemaking is done. It's that's in a pickup truck. That's how babies are born in Loganville. <laughs> Haven't you listened to like pop country music from 1991 to 2007? <laughs> that's how it's That's how we do it in Loganville. <laughs> Is that what do it down here? Yeah, that's Logan an entire Bale. Trace Adkins album. It's not just <laughs> to having sex in a Dodge in a Waffle House. Just all the all the facts from that article are, are a whole CD. <laughs> people Tra in track one Waffle House I'm parking lot. Track two people, sex in a truck. I'm surprised that even made the news. I think it was really only <laughs> the hamburger that made that unique. People in Winder, Georgia, you do it in. Fords, you know. <laughs> I had a girl from... A Fix or repair daily. I guess, <laughs> however you want to call Found it, Winder road, yeah. or Winder. The, yeah, yeah. the people from there call it Winder. Yeah. They, uh, I was doing a show at Buford Variety Theater, and as I'm <laughs> talking to a group of people afterwards, they were just kind of asking me stuff about comedy. and like, oh, I like your set, which doesn't happen often. So I'm like, let me talk to them. They actually thought I was funny. But uh, this one girl sneaks up from behind everyone, 
And they all had mentioned before that the whole group was from Winder. I turned around and she looked like she had done all the meth. Like all <laughs> of it. All the meth. In all of Winder. All yeah, yeah. And all she the meth. grabs my face on both sides very firmly to where I can't move my head and yeah. then proceeds to lick my entire face cartoon style from Fuck my yeah. chin to my forehead. <laughs> Yeah, and she's laughing hysterically about this. I'm like, that. I don't know what you've done with your face. It's gross. <laughs> so I get away from her. I go outside. I go to light a cigarette. The cigarette gets to my mouth. Her hand comes over my shoulder, smashes the cigarette, throws it on the ground, and in a loud, like, over the top volume, which she thought was a whisper, she says, "If you fucked me, you'd never need another cigarette again." <laughs> To which I replied, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, because you'd need a 44 in the mouth to kill yourself. After. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have, n- you know, I don't turn things down a lot, but you just <laughs> described probably the only situation. You've I'm never like, been to Winder, Georgia. It's yeah. uh, well, no, no, no. This an I, I, would, I would have passed on this. It's and a, it's rare, but unless it's an older woman. It's no, an but experience. I would have passed on this. That, that was a good thing for anyone to pass on. Like, she had no teeth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Legitimately whenever the, whenever you It's the starting them, fluid in the meth that really you nails the them, teeth. Uh, you know, as your grandmother, that's when, you know, that's when you call it off. Yeah. Winder, Georgia is wow. so bad. It is one of the worst places I've ever been to yeah. in my life. It I'm pretty is. sure the slogan for Winder is, fuck it, you're here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, you're here. That's great. <laughs> I remember I went to the ba- – uh, I was driving to Athens one time. <laughs> you drive out and it says, you are leaving Winder, you'll never need a cigarette again. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving to Athens and I stopped off in a – In a in Corinth. <laughs> yeah. I oh, I've been to Corinth. Yeah. I took the picture uh, of Corinth, Georgia on Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. But I saw a uh, – I stopped at a, um, at a gas station in, uh, in Winder, Georgia – and I went to the, I got the hubcap with the key on oh, it. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I opened it up, and the 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 door <laughs> opened it up. I opened that shit. <laughs> I opened up the door. I walked in on the condom machine. <laughs> it just had the word written in Sharpie, sinful, written across it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> and on one of the other adjoining walls, Somebody had just smeared doo doo. <laughs> so I was like, that just sums up. When, that just sums up the southern That's the experience. Yeah, exactly. Did you ever think about, have yeah. the condom machines where it said on the machine, you know, the best uh, uh, prevention of disease is still abstinence. <laughs> yeah. like it had like a, a, a the ones in Virginia at least had like a a Surgeon General's report on it, like almost like you know they have the warning on the cigarettes on the condom machine that said like you know abstinence is still the only. Foolproof method. Well, that's my favorite thing about disease. like graffiti or like that kind of stuff around the South. It's either incredibly biblical or extremely racist or both. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the biblical stuff. My favorite. Yeah. My favorite one was um, when I lived. I lived in this town, uh, St. Mary's, Georgia, where there was like a big um, mili- a navy base there. Okay. And there was this was rash. Like no, it was like South, right by Brunswick, Jacksonville, okay. sort of thing. There was this rash of graffiti because of people spray painting pentagrams <laughs> on like walls and fences and underneath it it would put full over it would say folks and underneath it, it would say followers of lord king satan oh, and they were that. showing up for like it was showing up all over the place to the point where three months later we had an assembly in school to explain why we shouldn't be satanists <laughs> a public school like they had the anti-satanism like assembly and this went on for six months, and it was like a big, oh, Satanists have overrun the town. Satanists has overrun the town. It ended up being a bunch of sailors that got drunk one day <laughs> and just spray-painted that on a fence. And everybody freaked out, and they're like, oh, we should do this more, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and they stopped doing it, and then other people bandwagoned onto oh, it. Yeah. That's amazing. We should make that a symbol. Like the, <laughs> the pentagram? Followers of Lord Satan. There's yeah. a fucking rap group and all this shit. Followers <laughs> of Lord King Satan. Yeah, well, <laughs> fuck, man. We could do satanic rap. <laughs> we could be like the originators. It, there actually was something sort of like that. There was like a, a genre for a while called horrorcore, where like the RZA had a group called the Grave Diggers and like a few other. Grave groups. Diggers, it was like yeah. insane clown posse. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, sort, of, sort of like that. Oh, yeah, he said a dirty word there. <laughs> to go on the internet and Google OK Cupid profiles of insane clown posse members, of juggalos, or, of juggalos yeah. yeah, or juggalos. It just rather. pulls up a ton of like from across the country yeah. profiles.
calls on OKCupid of these guys that follow it, and it's it's yeah. hysterical. And uh, they go on dates to this S Baro at the mall on Saturday. <laughs> and one then of they... my favorites is this one guy. It's like a picture of him in full makeup. He's holding like a beer can in one hand, a gun in the other, with the middle finger out, and at the bottom it says, "Only date juggalos for life. Must be pro choice." <laughs> <laughs> Reza, where can people find you on the internet, sir? Uh, you can find me Twitter, uh, Facebook, and all that good stuff. J Date, uh, E Harmony, Reza Asgari, or my website, RezaIsSmall.com. Why don't you wrap us out? Wrap us out. Uh, would you like out. me to drop a verse? I can actually drop do some verse. Serious. Can somebody yeah, beatbox? We'll do verse. one. We'll do one. Mm -hmm. Throw a couple kicks and snares on a track simply to tempt me to grab the fucking mic and transform into an MC. Let's end these misconceptions of what rappers should be, cause where you could be depends on how you spit a hook, see? And I could cook these lyrics up quick like crack kid, cut it up and sell it for 20 a nickel bag shit. Jungle is massive, got reggae artists asking if I'm Jamaican with as much of this weed that passes through my circulatory as I'm telling them stories on how I murked them kids and the details were gory, but the end result is the saint had all of their brains splattered on the back of the wall and I'm holding his chain. And all that remains is a bloody coat with part of his name and your boys are pouring out liquor all in the same spot on the ground reminiscing how we swallowed the pound and deep throated the barrel took the bullet all the way down come follow me now i'll take you on a little excursion on the streets of la in red and black beamers with persians with the flag of the shah tatted on the top of my arm middle fingers up in the air screaming holy jihad i got gangsters afraid of me shaking in their boots and running scared to death thinking i'm osama's second cousin trigger taped to my wrist c4 in the van it's hard not to learn explosives growing up in iran at least that's what you believe, but what the fuck do you know? You ever had a revolution knocking at your front door? That's why I'm not gonna change a fucking rhyme that I say and make sure to rebel with every fucking song that I play and add the fact I like to talk trash on top of my race. That's the reason that the feds are locking down all my tapes. There we go. Number one! Yeah. Number one! America! <laughs> I spit hot fire. Trump, <laughs> <laughs> Screaming do or die Looking at the water I ask it who am I? I Saw my reflection Yes, I'm super fly As you can guess again I'm too damn high But I'm bigger than Jesus And bigger than wrestling Bigger than the Beatles And bigger than breast implants I'm gonna be the biggest thing To hit these little kids Bigger than guns Bigger than cigarettes The Goods from the Woods Is mixed and edited by me Rivers Langley And distributed by Westcast Network our theme song is composed by DJ Smiles. You can find him online at djsmiles.net.